Hey guys, happy, happy, happy workout evening. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And my little workout partner, come on, there she is. <laughs> she just finished dinner and is pre-fired up about it. So she's all over the place. Right? Yes. <laughs> Can we get hands from you fired up for dinner? Woo, come here. Hey, come on, come on. Yo, you missed. Yeah, there we go. All right, guys, so thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm so excited that you joined me. We are going to do another circuit workout today. So we did circuit a few days ago. We did front body. And so we are moving into back body for today's circuit. So um, I hope you kind of read up on some of my posts where I was talking about the benefits of circuit training. Um, I think it gets a bad rap sometimes as being easy, and not, which I totally don't understand. If it's easy, that's probably on you, <laughs> honestly. Um, so there's just some, there's some great benefits to it. A lot of variety in your workout. It gives you a more speedy workout. You get the benefits of cardio with strength training at the same time. Um, just a lot of benefits to it. You can really play around with it and, and have fun with it and how you write the workout, how writing things in different orders gives you different results. So just a really cool way to work out. So all you're gonna need today is um, your weight selection. So a light, medium, a heavy. And really, you might find, I'm kind of looking, you're probably gonna live sort of in the medium range, I would say, the light to medium range. I don't see anything popping up that's gonna be super heavy. Um, but go ahead and grab yourself a light, medium, heavy so you have it. And then the only other thing you need is a resistance band. So um, we're talking circular resistance band here. I'm actually gonna use two um, of the different types because one exercise I know I can't do with this big daddy, so I'm gonna grab this guy. So um, either one will work, um, just if you have both, you might need one of each. But if you don't, this is gonna be perfectly fine, okay? So just circular resistance band, that's all you're gonna need there. And then of course, just, sorry, knock all my bands on the floor. Um, you're just gonna need your yoga mat, your floor support, whatever it is that makes you feel comfy cozy on the floor. So as I said earlier, while you're kind of getting yourself together, back body circuit. So if you stood sideways and drew a little line down the side of your body, everything kind of on the back half. So we're thinking like backs of our shoulders, our lat muscles, our back muscles, our triceps, our booty, our hamstrings, calves, that's sort of what we're going to be working with today. And um, there will be some ups and downs out of the floor. Nothing too dramatic. I tried to put a couple things together in the floor, but there is some ups and downs. So um, usually that happens in circuit, right? It's hard to just say, we're going to stay on the floor the whole time or half the time. I think I've been able to pull it off maybe once before. But if getting up and down out of the floor is super challenging for you, then I highly encourage go through the first set write down everything that you're going to do and then you can just put it in whatever order you want to do it in. I put it in a certain order for a certain way but it doesn't really matter in the long run. If it's don't do it or do it the way I said it then I'd rather you meet in the middle and write everything down in the order you want to do it and then you can still follow along with us. Use the same timer, everything. Just move it in your own um, order. So easy peasy. Uh, we're going to have again eight exercises. We're going to do each one for a minute with a 20 second break in the middle. So sort of like a Tabata. Um, so one minute, 20 seconds off, eight exercises. After we get to the end of the eight exercises, we'll take a minute and a half break, catch our breath, and then we will start over. So we're going to do that four times. And I just encourage you in that minute and a half, depending on how sweaty and, and worked up you get during the circuit, you could get cooled off in the minute and a half. And I don't want you to get cooled off. I want you to bring it down to a simmer, but not chilly. So if you, in that minute and a half, haven't really got super sweaty and worked up, then I want you to take that minute and a half and at least keep marching or walk around your room, go up and down a couple stairs. Nothing strenuous, we're taking a break, but I don't want you to get cold, okay? All right, so always just my couple housekeeping notes. I have music if you need it, no music here. Um, you're a pro to that, if this is, uh, but if this is your first workout, I just want to mention it is intentional that we don't have music. I encourage you to add your own. Um, modify if needed. If you do not know how to modify or I don't mention how to modify, then just drop me a comment if you're working out with me live or shoot me a message after the fact if you're working out on YouTube 
or um, Facebook delayed. So I'll be happy to get back with you on that. And then speaking of the comments, of course, at the end of each circuit, I'll check the video. I always check it just to make sure it's running because I can't see it from here. So I always check the video for that, but also for comments so I can help you with any questions in between rounds. Um, let's see, that's pretty much it. So speaking of Facebook, just always I ask that you please share these workouts, share what we're doing here, leave a review. That would be awesome. Any comments, interactions, anything we can do, just get people paying attention to what we're doing here because I think it's a pretty great thing. And uh, lastly, if you do wish to um, send me any donations for these classes, it is the only payment I receive. I'm not sponsored, I'm not backed by any gym. So anything that you send me is the only payment I receive and it is greatly appreciated. Venmo at Strong Style Fit is where you'll find me or if you're not a Venmo person, just let me know. We'll figure something else out. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you the first exercise just so we kind of know where we're getting started. And because it is, I think, a new one for this class. So I just wanna make sure you know how to get started. But then after that, as I talked about last time, and circuit, the first round might feel a little herky-jerky because it's um, you don't know what's coming next and you've gotta sort of figure out how to do the exercise before you get started. So just be patient. And uh, after the first round, it goes super smooth super fast. I just encourage you that when we go to each new exercise and you're kind of watching me to see what we should do, go ahead and be moving. Start at least following along. If I'm doing this, at least start kind of moving your arms or, you know, go ahead and start trying. Don't wait till you see me do it and see me do it a few times and get it figured out because if you do that, you're going to spend half your first round just standing still. So try to get moving as soon as you can and don't worry, it gets much easier as we go on. All right, so the first exercise we're gonna do is gonna be in the floor and you're gonna need your band. So I put this at the beginning because it's one of the trickier ones to set up. Not difficult, you just gotta sort of sort it out. So what we're gonna do is we want the band to be around our feet and then we can flip over from there, keeping that band around our feet. One foot is gonna be the anchor, so it's gonna stay flat on the floor, the band wrapped around it. We're gonna be a tabletop, the other foot's gonna come up and you're gonna kick back against that band and pull in, kick back. So we're just extending that leg against resistance. If you have tight hamstrings, I have tight hamstrings, they're gonna fire up pretty quickly. So I actually wrote this exercise where you can do it two different ways. You're doing the exercise the same way, but for some of us with really tight hamstrings, to do that for a minute straight on one side lead to cramps or just be really painful. So if you have really tight hamstrings at the 30 second mark, switch and do the other side. So start with your left, then go with your right. If you don't have tight hamstrings and you're doing okay, then I encourage you to go one minute on one side, then the next round do the other side and alternate back and forth. So you would do a minute on the left, then the next round a minute on the right. But if your hamstrings are too tight for that, just split it down the middle. I'll try to keep an eye on the time. Depending on how tight mine are today, I might be joining you with that split. So, just wanted to mention that. So that's our first exercise. Go ahead and get yourself set up. I'm gonna do my normal video check, and then we're gonna get started. when I was um, buying some Christmas stuff. And I was just thinking about how you laughed at me so much last Christmas and about all my decorations. So I was just thinking about you and I see you're recovering from surgery and I hope it is going well. And if you need anything, let me know, okay? All right, friends, so let's get ourselves set up. I've got the timer down here so I can call out that 30 seconds for those of us that need to switch. And I'm just going to hit the timer. I'm going to say three, two, one. And when I say one, you get to work. All right, we got three, two, one. Let's go. Push back. So you want to keep those hip points facing the ground. Don't let your hips flare up as you kick back. Kick straight back. You can hear the awful new crack that I have in my left knee. <laughs> it's probably 
audible if you don't have uh, some music playing. All right, guys, this is the halfway point if you need to switch. I'm going to see if I can maintain on one side here. So you should be feeling the back of that leg really firing up. 15 seconds. We're under 10, hang tough. From here, we're gonna grab a small set of hand weights. Perfect, pop it on up. You need a light set of hand weights. We're gonna work our rear delts, which is those small, small muscles in the back of our shoulders. So grab something small, I'm talking probably five or less. All right, so we are going to bend at the hips, hinge forward, flat back, weights facing this direction, roll those shoulders back and down, and we are opening up. So we're coming straight up, straight up and open. So a lot of times like when we do a fly, we're down more chest height. I want you to be really up with those shoulders. I'll show you from both directions. Make sure, don't do what I was just doing. Keep your gaze out slightly in front of you. Don't tuck your head down, pull it down at your belly, or even down at your shoes. I want you to look slightly ahead. So this should feel perfect. All right, this is actually where you're gonna grab yourself what your heavy weight is. So when we're doing that delt fly bent over, you should have been feeling up high in your shoulder. Now not up here high, but more up in this region, not down low, like where we feel most kind of shoulder work. All right, so we're gonna go up and two, bow tie, overhead, pull those elbows forward, stagger stance, tricep extension. Got those shoulders down, away from your ears. A lot of times when we pick our arms up, we come all the way up like this, shoulders down. Woo, all about the triceps, back of those arms. A lot of us ladies refer to those as our uh, bat wings back there. <laughs> I promise they can come back. Ah, I'm not going to say mine are perfect, but I have just a little, little wiggle up near my armpit. But that's about it nowadays. Awesome. All right, set that heavy weight down. We're going to grab our band. I'm going to the heavier band this round, and we're going to do the next two exercises in the floor. So don't worry, you don't have to hop back up right away. And we're going to do clamshells. And we've done these together before. All right. Just going to lay on one side. You want hips in line with your booty, knees stacked, tall through your shoulder, or if that's uncomfortable, come down to an elbow, and we open. Keeping those feet stacked behind us, we're just opening through our knees. Guys, I want you to think, squeezing that whole butt cheek to lift that leg. Oftentimes we do these just squeezing through our hip and we feel like we're getting a lot of work, but we're just kind of working that outer hip, which isn't terrible, but if you really think about using that whole cheek to squeeze, you get a lot more work out of it than just a burning hip. <laughs> Make sure this leg is staying anchored on the floor. Don't let it pull up. Mule kick kind of thing. So if you notice a mule kick, 
do what you know. We're going to flex our feet and kick up. So we've done this plenty of times. I just think I've called it mule kick every time. I don't know. It's one of those like great debates. <laughs> Either way, this is what we're doing. There's this other version where you're basically, see, I think of it more like a donkey kick. I don't know. <laughs> where you're basically like coming up onto your hands and kicking both of your feet up in the air behind you. You're keeping that foot flexed, that knee bent, as if we're trying to stamp the sole of our shoe on the ceiling. So imagine you had ink on your shoe and you were trying to leave a stamp for that sole. Perfect. All right, let's come on up. You can shimmy. Actually, what I just did was kind of like a donkey kick or a mule kick. Again, whichever one you want to call it. It was basically this crazy, like, where you're down here and you, like, kick it up back behind you. I don't know. It is not in my exercise wheelhouse. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to do reverse flies. So... We're gonna come down, weights. Now we have that bent arm. Now we're down lower, like I was talking about. And now we open down low. So where that duck fly was up higher towards the top of our shoulder, now we're working down more towards the mid and towards the bottom. Get a big, nice little healthy bend in our elbows. going a little lighter than normal. I've got a cold, not a frozen shoulder. It's not frozen as you can see, but I've got a stuck scapula that I'm getting worked on tomorrow. So I'm just staying a little light in the shoulder. All right, so we have got calf raises. So we're going to do a little calf raise series. I recommend having a hand on a wall, back of a couch, something like that. We're gonna do double, single, single. All right, so we're gonna come up, high as we can, drop, one foot, drop, other. Squeeze at the top. So if you have a step close by, you can definitely intensify the calf raise by dropping your heels off the back of the step. That will definitely kick the intensity up quite a bit. Or you can just really, really focus on that squeeze at the top. So a lot of us kind of calf raise by just sort of here. Really think highest high heels. Now be careful, your calves are prone to cramping. Don't push it to that point. Woo, all right. We've got a kneeling row. So we are gonna do single sided here, and this is where we're probably gonna go towards the heavy end of what you have. So we're just gonna do our left side. So we're gonna kneel. This is different for us. We're gonna kneel. You want your right knee up, put a pillow, whatever, if you have any knee trouble underneath that knee. We're going to sort of prop on the knee. Don't dump your weight. Prop. Shoulder back and down. We row back. So now we're thinking nice and low in that back. Not necessarily lower back, but in that low sort of waist all through here. Gives you a lot more stability than the standing row. For me, I think it lets you focus a lot more on that muscle because you're not also working to stand, working to bend over, none of that. You're just sort of calmly in this position so you can really focus on that row. If you have any issues, put yourself a pillow, double up your yoga mat, 
that's our break. <sighs> All right, guys, first trip through. So, like I said, it's always a little clunky in that first trip because you got to figure out what you're doing, how it all works. Hopefully from here on out, you've got it down, you're feeling good, and I hope you're kind of getting the, the gist of the muscles that we're working. All right, guys, I'm going to pop around and check out my video. tucking your neck down we're working up towards that neck we're working high you don't want to put that muscle or those muscles in any sort of bad position Sometimes we feel like we have to try to avoid the weight with our head, so we do this weird kind of drop. You'll be just fine. I bump my bun every now and then. That's about the worst that happens. Try to keep those elbows as forward as you can. For some of us, that's really challenging. So really try to pull them forward. 10 seconds left.
we'll do clamshell on the right side. Let's go around. All right, stack those hips, stack those heels, all in line with one another. We open up. You're welcome to be up on your elbow here, but only if you can stay strong through it and not collapse down in your shoulder. Again, squeeze that whole cheek to lift. If you're not sure, put your hand on it. You'll feel, is anything flexing back there or is it all up here? You have my permission to touch your booty. <laughs> Fifteen seconds. We're going to stay on the floor and do those alternating mule kicks. All right. Let's bring it on up to the tabletop. Readjust your band if you need to. So get that nice strong base, wide fingers, pushing away from the floor, flex those feet, stamp that ceiling. Try to keep a nice flat back. Don't start collapsing down. Both hips pointed down at the floor. Again, don't let your hips rock open as you lift. Pushing that floor away with those hands. trying to sort of stress is that our normal fly we do down a little lower and then that first fly we do up high. Ah. All right, reverse fly, throw those shoulders back, engage that core and we open. All the directions here. Make sure you're breathing. I breathe loud to remind you to. You. Fifteen seconds. Squeeze the back of those shoulders together. You're trying to grab a pencil. Whew. All right, we have got those calf raise sequences. So remember, if you have a step that is perfect, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to use yoga block, that's not steady enough, but you would drop your heel off and then come up. Drop your heel off, back up. The yoga block is just not steady enough. If I drop my heel too far, it's just going to flip over. And high as heels. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze at the top. Again, be mindful. Some of us are very prone to calf cramps, <laughs> so just be mindful here. If you feel a cramp coming, walk it out, and then maybe don't come quite to your highest heel. Come to like your three-quarter heel. 
maybe your kitten heel. <laughs> For those shoe lovers out there. All right, the last exercise. We've got that kneeling row. So we're gonna do our right arm. So we're gonna come down onto our left knee. Again, fold up a yoga mat underneath there if you need to, or put a pillow. We're gonna relax into our left knee. Again, we're not collapsing into it. We're just propping. Roll that shoulder back, engage that core. We pull straight back. Elbow right past that side. And keeping that gaze neutral. Don't stare down at your weight. Neutral. Head positioning, so important. And we don't think about it. Our head pretty much never sits where it's supposed to. Thanks to all the types of work we do and smartphones and tablets and our head pretty much never sits where it's supposed to anymore. So you really gotta be mindful. Pay attention. Again, this is a great time to evaluate what your weight selection, how's your band's working, all that kind of stuff. Set things where you need it to be to be successful. So this break is nice. And remember, if you are not hot and sweaty, if you feel that minute and a half, you're gonna come down to totally cool. I want you to do a little jog and play, a little jump rope, march around your room, whatever it is. Keep yourself in a simmer, don't get cold. All right, I will be right back, friends. <laughs> I love it, Caroline. Mules and donkeys are actually not the same thing. I know. I always thought it was too. And then somebody told me different. And then recently, I think it was, I don't know, it was mule days or something. Like I, we saw this thing about what was different between mules and donkeys. They're actually different. It's crazy. <laughs> If they kick differently, that I don't know. <laughs> That's the part that keeps tricking me out of this exercise. <laughs> I do think they're both adorable, um, super adorable. I don't know why they're like the ugly cute to me, but I love them. <laughs> All right, let's bring it down. Again, I goofed off and should have been putting this band on. All right, so if you're like me and stand with one side, then we are back to our left, otherwise, I will tell you when we get to the 30 second mark so you can switch if you are switching sides. Crack every time. It's so funny, my knees are feeling so much better than they ever have and I've just developed this crazy pop. <laughs> Some of those I'm like, I'm sure if I go to the doctor, they're gonna be like, your knees have grinded forever. Why are you concerned about a new one? <laughs> Especially if it doesn't hurt, but it's just so weird. All right, we've got that rear delt fly. Lightweight here. Really, really light. So while we are working, like I said, up higher in that shoulder towards those traps and towards that neck, you still should be feeling pain and tons of effort there. So if you are, drop your weights even lower. For some of us, no weights at all would probably be just fine. Right now, my left shoulder isn't super mobile. So even these five pounds are like, wow. Make sure you're keeping that core nice and engaged. Protect that back. Just trying to 
to show you different angles. I don't know if the back angle will show you anything, but just in case. <laughs> probably show me how awkward me. Or probably let me see how awkward my left shoulder is moving right now. <sighs> All right, we've got the overhead, bow tie, triceps. That's going to be your heavy weight. it up, elbows forward. Good. A lot of a struggle with those elbows forward. It's tight muscles that aren't allowing you to pull forward. So we need to do some upper body stretching. I legit stretch for about at least 30 minutes before these workouts for sure every time well worth it I was never a stretcher before workouts when I worked out in public um, sometimes just because I didn't have time but I just never did so I really do see the value and then I stretch all the time afterwards while I'm watching TV <sighs> it's just so good for you it feels so good All right, we've got those clamshells, bring it on down. We'll be back on the left side, this go around. <sighs> yeah, stretching is just so good. Like if you're just sitting watching TV, get in the floor, start moving. I always, uh, I'll tell you legit, I never liked to stretch. When I first started like kind of building muscle and getting some muscles developed, I didn't like to stretch because I felt like feeling tight felt good, like it made me look good. Like if my muscles feel really tight, then they must look tight and I, it must look awesome. And it's so not true. Um, <laughs> definitely learned that over time, but yeah, I didn't want to stretch because I thought it would make me not look as tight and firm if I stretch. But I think that's a common thing, right? And it kind of like logically makes sense, but it's not the case. So if you're in that boat or like, I don't want to stretch, it feels good to feel tight, I feel jacked. Just, just move past that. <laughs> you will still look beautifully jacked and sculpted with loose muscles. <laughs> yeah, squeeze that whole cheek to lift. Whole cheek. And I know I did for you guys in Trick or Treat Tabata short little stretch but I know it was also <laughs> a little distracting with puppy dogs and costumes but if that's anything you guys never be interested in I'd be happy to teach a stretching class it's something I'm really passionate about all right boom stamp that ceiling actually when we could do in the days of group fitness I taught a seated stretch class for group fitness. And it was great. I'll say it was one of my most well attended classes. I honestly was surprised myself to learn how much stretching. I've always been an in the floor person, so that's where I always do my stretching. But I was surprised to learn how good and how many stretches you could get seated. Burn, booty, burn. Almost there. Perfect. Pop it up. <sighs> All right, we've got that reverse fly. Whew. Sorry, I keep adjusting my pants too. These are like my favorite pair of pants. I would never spend the money it cost to buy Nike pants, and I got them on clearance, and I love them. And they are too big now, that makes me so sad, and I refuse to give up on wearing them. <laughs> I can literally like stick my arm down in them now. I don't care. <laughs> I love them. <sighs> I probably shouldn't wear them on videos. So I'm trying to adjust my pants every five seconds. <sighs> Good. So we lead with those elbows. Squeeze between those shoulder blades.
10 seconds. All right, calf raises. Again, I definitely encourage you if you have a step, to use the step. You'll get a lot more out of the exercise by using a step. I would definitely be using it if I have an option here. My step is about seven feet away off camera. <laughs> All right, squeeze it up. So we're doing double, single, single. Exercising them. Whew. I know they're sore from like taking long walks and things like that, but sore from like legit calf exercise. Oh my gosh. Probably won't get there from this, but maybe. But I have been like excruciatingly sore from calf exercises. And it was crazy. Like I couldn't even put my calves flat. On the couch, it hurts so bad. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. I was like, I never knew this was possible. Oh. All right, so we're back to that left side. So remember, put some support under that knee if you need to. We're propped on our arm, on our leg, but we're not dumping into it. We're just propped for stability. Stabilize that core, shoulder back and down. Scrape it past that shoulder, past those ribs, lower back. Really think about that back muscle. There's a lot of other muscles here that want to work up high in our shoulder. So really take the energy away from that. Really think about that mid back. That's where we're working. I'm really big about thinking about the muscle that you're working. So I'm always so specific about where they are. I really like to focus on that area. Talk to it, tell that area to work. Mind-body connection, super important. Love to talk about it. So if anybody ever wants to converse about mind-body connection, I am here to talk. Whew. All right, guys, that's the end of round three. We've got one more trip through. Ah, hope you're getting a little sweaty. I am definitely a little sweaty. And we, you know, and that, what's cool is if you're even a little sweaty, you know, you're not dying. This isn't a workout built to make you just fall on the floor. But this is sweat, breathiness from just legit concentrated muscle work. We're not doing any of, any of that kind of borderline cardio strength training. We're blending it a little bit with the pace that we're moving, but we're not doing something like a knee drive, you know, where we're building our quad, but we're also cardioing it out. So any kind of breathy, sweaty that you get from this is just straight muscle exertion. It's kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna check out that video. We got 40 seconds. my time to get myself set up in my band instead of going on and on about donkeys and mules. Oh, I'm trying to think. I know donkey and mule kick was one thing that my group fitness people always tease me about. I'm trying to think. There was, oh, walking planks. Walking planks. I definitely had a different interpretation of a walking plank than most people did too. Oh, all right. So, anchor down. If you're doing just one leg, then we're on our right. If you're alternating halfway through, I'll let you know when it's time. Remember, really extend that leg out. Boom. Halfway. So switch them out if you're switching. Make 
Guys, this should be a challenging exercise. You really should be feeling your hamstrings and your booty. But if this is excruciating, this is crazy intense, then really, really, really work on stretching those hamstrings. Tight hamstrings can lead to lots of physical problems. So, like I said, that should have felt tough. That should have felt super focused in that hamstring and glute. But if you were cramping or if it was like hachi machi, like I cannot stretch those hamstrings. All right, we've got those delt flies. Also notice here guys, we're more bent over than like we do the reverse fly. We're bent nearly to 90. Some people bend all the way to 90. That's just really uncomfortable for me and my crazy curvy spine. So I don't go that far, but a lot of people do bend all the way to 90. So that's okay. If you're comfortable there, knock it out. job guys control 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 don't let that weight just drop back behind your head lower it lift it lower it lift it you're feeling pain in your elbows and you don't normally have elbow issues just means your weight's too heavy your triceps not doing any work <laughs> your weight's just flopping down behind you so lighten your load a little bit. All right, we've got clam shells. We will be on our right side. Let's go around. Sure your bottom leg stay on the ground it should not be lifting up because of the pressure of this band You're not 
relax them into your shoulders. Stay strong, push away. shoulders. Pinch them together. Imagine somebody sticking a pencil back there and you're trying to grab it and hold it. Also make sure you're moving with control. If you feel the need to bounce, then your weights are too heavy. Happens a lot. We've got our calf raise series, and we've got our row, and then we'll be all done, friends. <sighs> all right, Let's load up those calf raises. Here we go. Tallest heels. Squeeze. Squeeze. Also, make sure your weight is evenly distributed across the ball of your foot. Especially when you do your single, make sure you're not rolling out to a side. Come up the middle. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So 
you know, especially if you did the, the previous one, you did front body, back body. So just again, another way to mix up how we work, to keep things interesting, not too boring. Again, circuit, a great way to get it going, get it moving fast. If there was no chit chat, no nothing, but at the beginning or at the end of the workout, and you literally just did that for time, it'd be 45 minutes and 50 seconds. So that's a quick in and out of the gym. If you were to take this video on the road with you, um, be a super fast way to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's anything else that you want to see workout wise, please let me know. We're getting into that holiday season. So I know people have all sorts of goals for that. Please make sure they're healthy goals. Not I'm trying to impress my friend's goals, right? <laughs> but if there's anything you'd like to see, I'd be happy to grant your holiday wishes and help you with those goals or help you learn something new or help you focus on a certain body part, certain type of workout, whatever it is, just let me know. I'd be happy to entertain the idea and hopefully provide that for you. So um, guys, I thank you so much for being here. As always, I just ask you to share these workouts. I would really appreciate any love that you can get, reviews, comments, anything super helpful to me in getting this business, uh, continuing this business as much as I can. And lastly, speaking of continuing business, if you wish to donate any funds for these workouts, Venmo at Strong Style Fit is where you'll find me. Donations are accepted, any type, whatever you can afford. All of it means the world to me. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in a few days for another workout. Have a great rest of your week and take care of yourself. Mwah.